Hello, welcome to the Cytogenetics, the study of cellular selfies webinar. My name is Crystal Melcher. I'm the Client Services and Events Manager with ASI. Thank you for joining us today. Before we start the presentation, I want to go over some general items. We do want this session to be interactive and welcome you to ask questions throughout the presentation. If you look at the bottom right corner of your screen, there is a questions box, so feel free to type in your questions there. We will end the webinar with a Q&A session and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. If we do not get to all of your questions, we will answer them via email within the next couple of days. I would now like to introduce our guest speaker, Jamie Springer. Jamie is the Quality Assurance Manager at CorePath Laboratories. Jamie, I will now pass the floor on to you so you can begin today's presentation. Thank you, Crystal, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today to my presentation, Cytogenetics, the Study of Cellular Selfies. Um, I'd like you to come take a comprehensive tour of our lab's journey into the evolution of our cytogenetics lab and, and how we've adapted in the expanding age of technology. First, I'd like to go through our presentation outline. Our journey today will follow this roadmap. I will take you through an introduction, an overview of digital pathology. We will dip our toes in the field of cytogenetics, visit the scope of testing, unpackage cell division a little bit, discuss the clinical importance of testing, go over image creation, image capture, and with a few interesting case studies sprinkled in, plus a little visit with Miss Rosie and some time for acknowledgments and thank yous. So on to the introduction. As Crystal stated, I'm Jamie Springer. I work at CorePath Laboratories here in San Antonio, Texas. Um, and I'm a cytogenetics tech and QA manager. A little bit about CorePath Laboratories. CorePath is a full service reference laboratory. We provide services in the following, cytogenetics, fish, fluorescence in situ hybridization, eight color flow cytometry, anatomic pathology, and molecular diagnostics. I like to think of CorePath as a one-stop shop for hematological testing which is kind of amazing to consider that we can perform all of these types of testing under one roof and provide a complete story for each of our patients. Since this presentation is about our lab's journey within the digital age, I wanted to unpack what digital pathology is. This is a definition of digital pathology from the Digital Pathology Association. They define digital pathology as a dynamic image-based environment that enables the acquisition, management, and interpretation of pathology information generated from a digitized glass slide, often used interchangeably with virtual microscopy. So I understand that several of you in the audience are either current cytogenetic technologists like myself, students, doctors, pathologists, anyone related into the field of genetics. And I bet you've heard this question at least once, maybe twice, maybe all the time like I do. Uh, I hear the question, cyto what? What do you do? Say that again. Can you, can you repeat that? Um, so I have included a definition of cytogenetics as defined by genome.gov. And they define cytogenetics as the branch of genetics associates the structure of DNA within the cell nucleus. The DNA is condensed during cell division and forms chromosomes. The cytogenetics studies the number and morphology of chromosomes using chromosome banding techniques for classical banding, classical cytogenetics, or hybridization fluorescently labeled probes, molecular cytogenetics, the number and morphology of chromosomes in a cell of a particular species are always constant 
in most cells of the body, with the exception of reproductive cells and other cells such as liver. This is the characteristics of each species in humans, such as the number of chromosomes is 46. That's kind of a long-winded definition. What I tell people is that I look at people's DNA and help figure out what type of cancer they have by looking at their chromosomes. And as you can see here, we have a normal male karyotype, some beautiful chromosomes. Um, this, what I like to tell people, it's a little bit shorter, sweeter, and to the point about what we do. The Book of Life. I mentioned in a previous slide that at CorePath, we are a one-stop shop that provides patients with a complete diagnostic story. So you may wonder, how does cytogenetics fit into this whole diagnostics picture? When I talk with people, and I talk with people all the time, I like to explain diagnostics using an example as a book. And so I like to start with fish. I like to think of fish as a sentence on a page. And then I like to think of cytogenetics as being a page of that book. And that sentence of fish is on that page of cytogenetics. Then I think of flow. I think of flow as a chapter within that book, which houses your cytogenetics and your fish. Then I think of anatomic pathology as a section of that book, comprising of the chapter, the page, and the sentence of the other testing types. And I like to think the patient as the whole story start to finish. They are everything. They are all the different types of testing that help compose, the, compose each patient. So on to the nitty gritty of cytogenetics. In cytogenetics, we are looking at chromosomes. And I like to unpackage mitosis and go with the joke, division is really multiplication. In cytogenetics, we're looking at chromosomes, which are generated during mitosis. And let's go through some of the phases as a quick review. First, we start off with interphase, where the centrosomes appear on the scene and the chromatin and the DNA replicate. Pretty busy, right? Next, we move to prophase. Chromosomes consisting of two chromatids are forming along the mitotic spindle. Now during prophase, there's also some other things going on. You have chromosome condensation. So the DNA wraps around histones. The DNA loops are linked by condensin, further folding of condensin units. Multiple condensin units are formed, sister chromatids are formed, and a condensed chromosome is formed. Prophase is a pretty exciting and very busy phase of mitosis. Next, we'll move to prometaphase, where the nuclear envelope fragments and the microtubules, the kinetochore microtubules attach to the centromeres of each chromosome. Then we move to metaphase. Chromosomes align in the center of the cell at the metaphase plate. Now, this is our final stop on the right of cell division in the field of cytogenetics. However, there are two more phases, anaphase, telophase, slash cytokinesis. They're important, but not part of our discussion today. During metaphase, division is halted, and further processing is necessarily necessary to visualize these chromosomes. And we'll get into that a little later. Clinical importance. So next, that brings me to why this is important clinically. How does this condensed DNA, packaged so beautifully in chromosomes, help us help people? Well, cytogenetics is an important diagnostic tool used to identify disease, evaluate disease stage, and evaluate treatment progress. Cytogenetics has a resolution of greater than or equal to five megabases, where FISH has a resolution of greater than or equal to two megabases. When talking about the relationship between cytogenetics and fish, I like to quote Betty Dunn. She used to say, fish asks a specific question and gives you a specific answer. And I love that quote, and I probably use it at least once a day. Where cytogenetics is a genome-wide view of the DNA. Both technologies provide information on amplifications, deletions, 
balanced and unbalanced translocations, mosaicism, polyploidy. They're technologies that, that go hand in hand together. And you can see an example of what I mean with these two images. Our fish image is showing just a probe signal pattern for the IGHC CND1 probe with a normal probe pattern, but that's all you're looking at. You're asking a specific question about the IGHC CND1 locus, and you're getting a specific answer. Whereas the same patient, you can see their whole genome all at once using their karyotype, but you're also finding out more information at the same time. You're seeing that they're also missing their Y chromosome. So these two two technologies go hand in hand quite nicely. So you may be wondering how we get these beautiful images, and it starts in the lab, which is where the magic happens. And here is the workflow of our cytogenic fly at Corpath. First, our specimens are accessioned, where they are entered into our LIS and distributed. And we have three lovely ladies in the accessioning area. If you were to call into the lab and send us a specimen, you would be, get to talk with one of them. From there, they're delivered to, delivered to the different laboratories within our lab. For us, we receive them, and suspension cultures are initiated. And as you can see, here's Bo, busy in the biosafety cabinet setting up cultures. After our cultures have been incubated, they are harvested using our Hanabi P2 automated harvester, as seen in this third image. One of our cytogenic lab's first steps at adaptation into this increasingly technical world was getting an automated harvester. Our harvester, which we like to call Hannah, allows for a few things that have helped our laboratory adapt to this digital and technological age. She allows for an increased consistency with our metaphase harvest, decreasing our overall harvest time. She increases our availability of tech time. So it's really awesome to be able to put your specimens inside of our harvester and be able to do other things in the laboratory for the day while the harvest is running. It's also decreased our reagent usage and has increased our overall efficiency of a cytogenetics lab. Our wet lab is a finely tuned machine composed of instruments and people that have timed everything so precisely. It's really quite amazing to watch. Then our fixed specimens are dropped within our thermotrons. And as you can see here, Valerie is busy dropping slides. And our thermotron is another one of our technical adaptations which allows for increased consistency with our metaphase spreads, also reducing our frequency of redrops, our decrease of supplies that we need to use, increasing the quality of our images, and increasing the efficiency of our lab with being able to control the environment in which we drop our slides in. Then our slides get stained using right stain, and here's Bo again working some staining magic. Then we come to image capture. We load our slides onto our animated scanner for capture and analysis. Uh, currently, we are using an ASI scanning station equipment set up with the latest software suite. Uh, our scanner has a capacity for nine slides at a time, and, and we get a fair amount of usage out of our scanner. I love our scanner personally. Analog and digital analysis. So I wanted to take a second and compare some of the attributes of old school and new school analysis. You may or may not believe this, but when I was in the UTSCSA program, which is the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio, which is a mouthful, with Betty Dunn, I was trained using the old school methodology. Everything was analyzed manually using microscopes, including image capture using analog cameras, which did a couple of things. It limited the number of images taken per case. Our analysis was documented by hand. Uh, ergonomics and eye strain was always an issue for everybody. And this tied you to your microscope. You had to be at your station to analyze and create your karyotypes. 
So after training, and when I got hired at CorePath in 2012, I was fortunate to find out that they had an automated scanner when the rest of the field was still using a manual process, which blew me away at the time because scanners were kind of this, you know, thing you talk about and you, you do a little research into, but nobody has one. You know, you couldn't get your hands on one. And I walk in and there's one, you know, smiling at me saying, come use me, come analyze. And and using an automated scanner, scanner uh, and using some digital technology enabled us to analyze digital images instead of analog, which increased our image quality because you have a digital system using a digital camera versus an analog system. It increased our speed at which we were able to analyze. It's really amazing to be able to sit and analyze your cells and not have to scan and search for each cell. They're already there, ready for you to analyze. And our image quality is much greater. The images are so much crisper and easier to analyze and work with. This also was able to help with our case review process, which was streamlined a couple times over because we had clearer images, we had auto-generated worksheets because we were using an ASI system, um, you were using digital files, you didn't have to scan documents, you didn't have to upload, you didn't have to um, fumble with folders, they were all ready for you within the system for, for you to work with. Uh, there was also, there was no more trying to struggle with trying to read someone's handwriting. Was that an X and a Y, or was that a 9 or a 4? Um, you could clearly see what was going on. This also was really nice because you got to sit at a screen rather than sitting in a microscope. So those ergonomic concerns about eye strain and adjusting your chair and your microscope, those, those went out the window. It's really nice to be able to sit and look, use a computer screen and a mouse rather than sit at a microscope. Uh, and being able to use this digital technology also enables us to collaborate within the lab with each other as well as other facilities and allows us to be location independent for analysis. Ultimately, this ties together resulting in a lower turnaround time with results to our patients sooner. So we're here at CorePath, our turnaround time last year was 4.6, excuse me, days for our cytogenic testing. That's amazing. Uh, most turnaround times are advertised as seven to 10 to 14 days. So to be able to get them out in half that time is amazing. And it feels great to be able to give people answers that they've been waiting for sooner. So a little bit more on digital communication. Along with adaptations for our analysis in our wet lab, we also have adaptations and shifts in this digital age um, and one of the giant leaps that we've taken here at CorePath is our lab information system. Our LIS, LabVisor, is actually compatible with the ASI software um, in multiple ways. And one of the ways is it enables a seamless transfer of information from one system to another. So making the manual entry of case information the thing of a past. We don't have to sit there and manually enter each cytogenetics case. We get to have the information automatically transferred for us and the information is already set. So all we have to do is verify everything and start our analysis. It's pretty amazing. And so with our systems being linked together, we can also have the ability to upload our karyotypes, our worksheets directly into LabVisor. And this allows case review and sign out to be completed anywhere with this cloud-based system. And since we are a one-stop shop, another amazing feature of our LIS is that all of our testing results are available in one platform. So there is no time delay for looking at results of other testing types. So if I'm sitting there reading my case, I can go and check and see what the other testing types, the results were, which in a lot of places is a, is a huge hiccup. You're waiting for either another department to release it, or you're waiting on the file transfer, or you're waiting on the folder, or it's at a whole different facility and you're waiting for them to send you, 
you know, the information you need to finish up what you're doing. And that is an amazing attribute of this digital adaptation that we have um, here at CorePath. The other thing that is also amazing is all this information is available to our billing department, which increases their efficiency as well. Uh, clinicians can also view all of their testing types all at once under one platform and one dashboard, which enables them to have instant results, increase the speed of communication between us and them and vice versa. Uh, it also allows for better image quality and report quality. And in addition to our LIS, which speaks to our ASI software, we also use the Anywhere system that is offered by ASI, uh, which allows for cytogenetics to be performed anywhere and uploaded to LabVisor anywhere, making it possible for us to have analysis and case sign out done anywhere. You're only limited by your internet connection, especially since both of these systems are cloud-based. And even in the six or eight years that I've been in the field, that is a huge improvement um, to be able to access all of your information remotely. As promised, I have a few case studies. And let's dive into some chromosomes. Our first, our first case study is a 50-year-old female presenting with a diagnosis of pancytopenia. Her results for cytogenetics was a translocation 15-17 in seven of the 20 cells. With hard work from our wet lab and our digital system, we were able to get these results out in two days. That's pretty fantastic. The fish results also showed a PML RARA translocation in 50% of the nuclei analyzed. And these results were able to be produced the same day by using our STAT PML RARA probe, which allows for a one hour hive, which is pretty awesome. The flow cytometry yield yielded a result of promyelocytic leukemia, which also results the same day. And the bone marrow morphology also had results with acute promyelocytic leukemia with a translocation 15, 17 in two days. Our digital system allowed for prompt communication within and outside the laboratory and allowed us to deliver life-saving results to a patient with her being able to receive immediate treatment with all retinoic acid later that evening. So between adaptations within our technical space, within our wet lab, for our fish with our stat probe, our communication with our LIS, our our image quality and digital communication through our LIS and ASI, we were able to deliver results that saved this person's life within 24 hours. And that is really quite amazing. And these are pretty good images and amazing quality of work done here. Okay, study number two. Look at some more chromosomes. Case study number two is a 45-year-old female presenting with a diagnosis of CML. The cytogenetics demonstrated a translocation 922 in all cells, which was delivered in four days, while FISH also demonstrated a translocation 922 and 98% of the nuclei analyzed. And these results were able to be communicated the same day to the clinician, so the patient again, was able to receive treatment with a personalized treatment of Gleevec, so a specific treatment for a specific genetic abnormality. Again, our speed and efficiency and clarity due to our adaptations in our technical and digital space allowed for this patient to have quick and efficient and effective results for their patient story. Case number three, and then you may be wondering, because I would wonder this if I was watching a presentation, I actually did work on each one of these cases. So all of these chromosomes, I did see live, and not just in this presentation. So back to number three. This is a 32-year-old female presenting with a diagnosis of AML. And cytogenetics revealed an interesting result along with FISH. So FISH demonstrated 
a rearrangement of the AML ETO probe with results at day three. While cytogenetics demonstrated a translocation 8, 10, 21, having the material move from the 8Q to the 10Q, then moving to the 21Q and back to the 8Q. This case was a lot of fun and it was great to unpackage what was going on for this patient. And we were able to do that in four days. And this is another great example of how technologies dovetail together. So the cytogenetics and fish went hand in hand and the different resolutions of the testings were able to complement each other. So again, FISH was only asking a specific question about the AML ETO regions, which showed they were abnormal, but the cytogenetics with its genome-wide view was able to show us how and where the translocation occurred and what changes were happening. This, is, this was an interesting case that you know, just demonstrates how amazing the technologies that we have for diagnostic testing really are. Go to case study number four. We have a 60 year old male presenting with a diagnosis of JAK2 positive myeloid neoplasm. Within four days, Cytogenetics was able to release a result of a derivative 7, resulting from a translocation 17 and trisomy 9 in 19 of the 20 cells analyzed. Unfortunately, this is a known and rare abnormality seen in AML that is preceded by myelodysplasia. The trisomy 9 is a secondary change with a translocation 17. Unfortunately, this is a poor prognosis for the patient, but we were able to receive clear results promptly in order to obtain appropriate treatment. So without clear chromosomes, we wouldn't have been able to decipher what was going on and give them their accurate diagnosis of, of what's happening. So due to technological advances and improvements, uh, we were able to give this person some answers that were much needed. Case study number five. We have a 28-year-old female presenting with a diagnosis of BALL that is BCR negative. Within two days, cytogenics and FISH results were issued, showing an abnormal pattern for the EQA region, seen here, in 88% of the nuclei. Cytogenetics, however, showed a triplication of the 1Q region. Check that out. A translocation 312. and a derivative 19 from a translocation 119 in 14 of the 20 cells. So again, the pairing of these testing types was able to provide a more complete diagnosis for the patient, with the E2A question being answered by FISH, yes, it is rearranged, and the cytogenetics showing how it is rearranged, in addition to other significant abnormalities being present. Look at those beautiful chromosomes. I have to say that that is a beautiful triplication of a 1Q. I really do love what I do. So looking at these chromosomes is so much fun for me. Okay, on to case study number six. We have an 18-year-old male presenting with a diagnosis of CML. FISH results demonstrated two cell populations with atypical rearrangements for the bcr able probe in two days. Cytogenetics demonstrated the cause for the atypical signal pattern with a 922 and an additional Philadelphia chromosome. Cytogenetics was also able to expand the diagnosis with its genome-wide view with an additional chromosome 1 and an ISO 17Q. The ISO-17Q is indicative of secondary changes and impending blast crisis of CML. Two, this is a great example of two types of testing working hand-in-hand -hand to provide a better story for this patient's book. On to our last case study. 
case study number seven. We have an 87-year-old male with a, presenting with a diagnosis of unspecified B-cell lymphoma. Cytogenetics revealed a minus Y and a plus 12 in seven of the 20 cells analyzed. The cytogenetics revealed the abnormal finding on the stimulated culture. And for stimulated cultures, we use Ig, excuse me, CPG IL2 stimulation. Our B cell NHL panel showed a normal pattern for all probes with results in one day. Our flow and morphology testing also showed B cell lymphoma as well within four days. We have some scatter plots from our flow cytometry here. The CPG IL2 stimulation was able to provide a finer detail and diagnosis with the trisomy 12 result. Our CPG IL2 stimulation has been an amazing addition to our laboratory and advancement and has provided an increased abnormality detection rate for our B-cell diseases, providing further focus on our patient's stories. Another one of the one of the things that we've focused on and improved on for our patients, which has yielded great results. That's it for case studies and now we're going to visit with Ms. Rosie. So to wrap things up, I wanted to share a story that illustrated why we do what we do. Why do we perform diagnostic testing? Miss Rosie is a life we cared for. She was a spicy lady, which are her words, not mine. From marketing to accessioning to testing to diagnosis to billing, each one of us here at CorePath made a difference in her life. And it's people like Miss Rosie that we work for. We cared for her samples and for her several times over a couple of years. Our testing and diagnosis led, her, led to her eventual treatment. She passed away this last year, unfortunately. However, each one of us contributed to her well-being and survival for these couple of years we got to know her. We all worked hard to ensure that she had a timely and proper diagnosis. She received treatment and she was able to live for another two years after her diagnosis, and she made the most of it. Rosie lost her husband at a relatively young age. To become a single parent to four children, she went back to school and began to work full time when most women wouldn't do that at all. At the same time while supporting her children, she worked hard her entire life. In those two years we got to know her, she lived for herself. Traveled, she took classes she enjoyed. She began to online date and date a man 13 years younger than her. And she had some great stories. And she also would like to say that she robbed the cradle. Her words, of course. He was there for her when she was ill. Uh, an amazing cook, as Rosie would describe him. And as she liked to say in front of him, he would wait on her hand and foot. She remained spicy and good-natured all the time that we got to know her. She appreciated what we had done for her. She was so grateful to have an answer of why she wasn't feeling very well. She lived and still lives on in all those who have come into contact with her and us. We perform diagnostic testing for Miss Rosie and all patients. We care for lives. That's why we do what we do. All these advancements are to provide better care for the lives that we work with. We take on digital and technological and scientific advancements to help people to care for lives, and that's why we do what we do. So I'd like to show you some of CorePath's finest to wrap things up a little bit. Uh, I just want to give a final shout out to my cohorts at CorePath, and here is our fabulous Cytogenics and Fish team. You have myself, Valerie, Maria, Nupur, Belinda, Maria, Cirque, Robbie, and Bo. Staff one is there right now. And then this is a picture of our entire CorePath crew at our groundbreaking for our new laboratory. And I'd like to take some time for some thank yous. I'd like to thank the Cyto Fish team at CorePath for all the amazing work that they do, the entire crew at CorePath, 
ASI for letting me come out and talk with you today, and the lovely audience for tuning in today. And I hope you enjoyed my presentation, and I believe it's time for some questions and answers. So our first question of the day is, how has automation benefited your lab? Automation has greatly benefited our lab in several ways. It's allowed for increased efficiency for our laboratory, so our processing time has decreased and been greatly, has decreased and which also now allows for greater consistency with the product that we're producing, which allows for increased interpretation the accuracy of that and the precision of that. It's lowered our turnaround times across the board. Um, automation has been a great addition to this laboratory. With increased consistency comes increased effectiveness and increased speed. The next question, do you always use the FISH technique? We do not always use FISH. The testing is ordered by our clinicians and we process based on what is requested. And if fish and cytogenetics are requested together, we process that. And if they aren't, then we do whatever testing is requested. Our next question is CPG, what is it? CPG is unmethylated bacterial DNA um, and it is a stimulant that we can use. We currently use it paired with IL-2. Um, if you'd like more information about our stimulation process, we can send you some reference information about that. Well, thank you, Jamie. Uh, I think we have one last question. Um, we're asking here if you could describe the QA process in your lab. I certainly can. I'm, I'd love to answer the previous two questions, and I'll answer those in an email. Um, I can definitely describe our QA process in our laboratory. So for our quality assurance, um, for every piece of technology, which is what I'm hoping this is in reference to, every piece of new technology or equipment or process that we take on, we run a complete validation process on it. 
um, and we run it start to finish, we do a comparison, we also do a review. So for example, when we decided to take on our HANA, our automated harvester, we did a complete validation start to finish processing every specimen type uh, in replicates. We compared that to our manual process, of course, and then we also compared image quality, metaphase quality, metaphase number, um, any parameters that were applicable to the quality of our specimens and our processing, we validate it. And that goes for any type of digital or analog uh, process here at the laboratory. Um, our quality assurance plan is comprehensive start to finish, and we focus on pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical phases within our laboratory. So when anything that falls within that, we take a look at, and we also have a comprehensive program with meetings that are host, hosted and results that are reviewed monthly. Um, and if there are more detailed questions, I can answer those as well. So one of our questions is for our um, You can type in your questions in the question box in the control panel. So feel free to type in questions there, and we'll go ahead and, and try to go through as many as possible. So one of our questions is asking about our case study number three and how we knew that part of chromosome 21 returned to chromosome number eight. For that case, we were able to perform sequential fish and be able to see the location of each probe um, on the abnormal metaphases. So we were able to see and determine the route of the freeway translocation. Our next question is a little uh, long-winded. So for the reader who asked about validation of new fish probes, that is something I'd prefer to answer in an email. Thank you so much, Jamie. I think that concludes uh, the questions for today. Uh, thank you again for joining us and we appreciate your time and we hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, Jamie, do you have anything else to add before we, we go offline? Um, I think just thank you for having me and it was a great experience and for any of these questions I wasn't able to answer at this point in time. Um, I'm more than willing and happy to work with anybody uh, via email, which I believe is somewhere. Um, especially for more of the QA and validation questions that are a little longer. Um, my email is always open. And thank you again, Crystal, for having me. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, everyone. We hope you have a great day, and we hope you enjoyed today's webinar.